Dr. Chekic, how many years have you been using ablation? Uh, size seven years. And how much volume do you do? What's the most patients you've ever treated in a single day with ablation? 28 cases. Hello, everyone. This is Philip James with the RFAMD podcast. Welcome. Today, we're talking about thyroid ablation. Today's guest is Dr. Bulan Cekic. He's an interventional radiologist from Turkey, and he's treated over 4,000 cases of thyroid ablation. In some days, he's treating as many as 28 patients. He's well known for not only treating patients, but training other doctors in ablation. And today's topic is patient selection and patient follow-up. Before we get started, if you are looking for an ablation doctor, you will find one at rfamd.com. That's the premier global directory of ablation doctors. Dr. Chekic, welcome. I just shared a very brief introduction about your background and experience. If you can please share additional details about your background and experience. Dr. Cech, it's, it's great to have you here today. I just um, shared a brief um, bio about your experience and background. Uh, but if you could please tell those listening a little bit more about your background and experience. Yes, uh, I'm an uh, interventional radiologist and I'm here the Chief of the Department of Antalya Research and Training Hospital. Your hospital is the second biggest hospital uh, of Turkey. We cover it here approximately 50 million people. And this is a research and training hospital. And we don't do only thyroid ablation. Uh, we do here most vascular interventions. I do both thyroid artery embolization in diffuse I I do this job like 26 years uh, here, and this is all <laughs> what I can say about me. You, uh, I do uh, science seven years uh, thyroid ablation. Mm -hmm. My case series is approximately 4,000 cases I do, and uh, many doctors come to my department to. Uh, workshops approximately 90 between 90 and 100 uh, doctors come to mm -hmm. my department to learn uh, this uh, procedure and uh, I will always try to share my knowledge what I uh, know not only the perfect things because uh, in most of conference every doc we share mostly only the perfect things I share here mostly not only the perfect sometimes my mistakes my complications and how we can avoid from them or how we can treat the complications mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes always don't go perfect and mm -hmm. it is important to manage sometimes these situations yeah and it's through learning through mistakes is sometimes where the biggest uh yeah the most learning takes place through the authenticity and transparency yeah so it'd be great to learn a little bit more about uh, patient selection and patient follow-up during this interview. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start with the first part. Tell us about patient selection. Yeah. Uh, in thyroid thermal ablation, it is very important uh, in which case we treat, which nodule we treat. Uh, my uh, experience is the best candidates for thyroid ablation are the spongiform. Uh, echo structures, spongiform nodules, and second is the nodules with a uh, high percent of liquid component, and nodules with intense peripheral or intranodal patterns, vascularity, uh, these are good uh, choices. And in my clinical practice, I always use shear wave elastography. This is the ultrasound method in which this method, we measure the stiffness of the nodule. And as we know, nodules that are soft, in these nodules we have a better shrinkage rate. 
than the hard nodule. Therefore, the stiffness of the nodule is very important. Therefore, in every cases before ablation, we measure measure with shear wave elastography the, uh, the, the elastography uh, value, and we have now uh, ongoing clinical trial, and we found that under 30 kilopascal, if the nodal stiffness is under 30 kilopascal, uh, the volume reduction rate is minimum 70 percent, mm -hmm. and uh, the volume is a very important factor. The nodal volume. Uh, nodal volume under 10 cc are uh, good candidates for ablation but if the nodal volume is above 10 or above 15 uh, uh, cc's this type of nodules mostly need a second season for treatment these are uh, the internal structures of the thyroid nodules this uh, group of thyroid nodules are the best candidates for uh, thyroid ablation. This is uh, the internal structure classification. We have another classification and for the beginning, uh, the best candidates are the uh, candidates that have a high cosmetic score because uh, most of the patients won't see the results. They can Sometimes they cannot understand uh, the numbers, what we, they explain. And I always try uh, to select patients that have a high cosmetic score because after three or four months uh, we see outside the results with the patients too and the patients are happier. Uh, Dr. Chik, it's very interesting. So what you're describing is the nodule that is getting the best results from ablation. Really briefly, tell us the nodule that's not a good candidate for ablation? Yeah. Uh, nodules that have, uh, firstly, is nodules that have a low echogenity, hyperechoic nodules. This group are not good candidates. Nodules that have macro calcifications inside, uh, nodules that are stiff. If we uh, measure with shear wave elastography and if the uh, stiffness value above 50 kilopascal, this nodule group is not a good candidates for ablation. In this nodule group, we don't have uh, good results. Or sometimes patients come, they, they are multinodular guatas. They have many nodules in both sides. And in, I mostly refuse this group. The best uh, uh, stiff nodules, nodules that, that have low hypo, low echogenity and nodules that have macro calcifications, this group is there are not good candidates for thermal ablation. How do you measure the stiffness? Uh, in most of the ultrasound devices, we have a program. It is elastography. We have two types of elastography programs. One is train elastography, and second is shear wave elastography. Shear wave is most new technology, and uh, in most of the ultrasound devices, we have this program. We uh, measure, we measure directly uh, the. We go with the ROI uh, in the middle of the nodule, and uh, the ultrasound devices. Uh, measure automatically the stiffness of the nodule. So you're not having to do any biopsy. You're able to measure the stiffness through ultrasound? Yeah, yeah. This is only for stiffness. You can only measure the stiffness with shear wave elastography. With biopsy, we only uh, can uh, diagnose if it's benign or malign, but not the stiffness. Uh, Dr. Chikic, how many years have you been using ablation? Uh, Science, seven years. And how much volume do you do? What's the most patients you've ever treated in a single day with ablation? 28 cases. Regardless of research, regardless of papers, regardless of what the device manufacturer says, when you are actually practicing ablation as much as you, Mm -hmm. What have you learned? What has been most revealing, revelation? What has been the biggest surprise to you about ablation for thyroid nodules? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay, for me is the biggest surprise. I do uh, popular mic. I do ablation in popular microcarcinoma two since two years, and for me was a surprise. In as in the research paper, I see the same in my clinical practice. Ninety-five percent of patients with popular microcarcinoma that I have ablated in six months after six months. I cannot see the ablated region in ultrasound. It totally resolves. It was very really surprising to me. And uh, I learned this from many uh, research papers, most of research papers from Korea. And the second is, uh, what I like is mostly the cosmetic score. Patients come here with big uh, cosmetic scores, big nodules, six centimeters seven centimeters and only uh, if we choose the right nodule and if the nodule is spongiform in this patient group uh, the patient come after three months and you can from see from outside on the skin nothing it's totally resolved this surprised me very much Second uh, time, I treated not only benign thyroid nodules, mostly I treated parathyroid adenomas and toxic adenomas. This group, in this group, we see the results with uh, biochemical laboratory test results. It is more, uh, how can I say, scientific or uh, objective. And you see only after, in parathyroid adenoma ablation, only after one day, and after toxic adenoma ablation, after two weeks, the normal hormone levels and the patient is happy, you are happy with only uh, one or three minutes uh, ablation time. I like it is. I like the type of the non-invasive method because patients come uh, and we do the totally uh, procedure time is mostly 10, maximum 15 minutes. And the patients, after this procedure, patients uh, take mostly a, 20 or 30 minutes rest and patients return to him, uh, his ho home. Uh, this is very a big comfort for the patient and for the doctor, not only for the patient, for the doctor, for the costs of the uh, hospital costs, everything. And I like this uh, non-invasive and uh, method of this technique. You know, with all these excellent results that you are uh, accomplishing for your patients, why do you think some doctors around the world are resisting hmm. using ablation yes. for thyroid nodules and still insisting on yes. surgery? Yes. Yeah, in uh, different countries have different dynamics. Uh, firstly, I will answer why I have so uh, high volume of patients in my eye. The first reason is in my country, in Turkey, the national insurance system covered everything. The patient don't pay nothing in thyroid ablation. This is the first thing. But uh, I have many problems in my uh, same hospital. Most of the endocrinologists or surgeons don't want sent. I think uh, they are not familiar with this technique. Uh, I invite many endocrinologists or surgeons, and I explain. Uh, they, I think, mostly traditional. They think that if we treat uh, this patient group, we touch them patient group. Sometimes they have have too much ego. They think this is my patient. You cannot touch. Uh, therefore, uh, I think if a doctor begin to thyroid thermal ablation. Uh, my experience is he must, he must not wait that other doctors sent him patients. He must found the patient's self. I think maybe after five years or 10 years, it changes, but now the situation is so. Yeah, the, with what you describe, I think it's so important for patients who listen to this interview yeah. that they select a doctor that puts the patient's um, outcomes first as a priority. It's all yeah. about the patient and avoiding surgery and saving the thyroid. Yeah. 
Okay, so part of this interview uh, is the patient follow-up. What can you tell us about the patient follow-up? Yeah, uh, my experience is uh, firstly, it's dependent, the follow-up is dependent uh, which type of thyroid nodule do you ablate. In parathyroid adenoma ablation, I always call the patients after two days because we see the hormone results after one day. Therefore, I won't see the hormone results. After, if I ablated toxic adenomas, I call the patients after three weeks because in three weeks, all the hormone uh, levels go to normal. But if I ablated normal benign uh, thyroid nodules, I will always uh, uh, I will always make the first uh, follow up in after three months, because in most of the patients in the first one month uh, related with uh, edema, most of the patients have sometimes increasing in the volume. We uh, and uh, therefore uh, I wait three months. To see the effect if the patient have a discomfort about the procedure the patient can come of course but my follow-up is my first follow-up is after three months then i call the patients after six months and the last is 12 months and but the most, most efficient volume reduction rate is in the first three or four months and the follow-up is blood tests and ultrasound uh, if I ablated benign thyroid nodule, uh, if the thyroid nodule uh, not producing hormones, if the patients are otroid, I only do the follow-up with ultrasounds. But if the thyroid nodule hypervascular or it is a toxic adenoma, then I do the follow-up ultrasound with laboratory test. Uh, ex excellent, excellent. Uh, this is uh, excellent to hear. Um, how you uh, do the patient selection and how you do the patient follow-up for anyone listening, any physician listening, any patient list listening, uh, they can find your contact info in the description to this episode. Is there any final thoughts you would like to share about either patient selection or patient follow-up? Yes. Lastly, I want to say uh, I use two techniques. Two technologies in thermal ablation. One is radiofrequency ablation, and second is micro ablations. And uh, both techniques have some advantage and disadvantage. Uh, in micro ablation, uh, I use mostly micro ablation in big nodules, very big, because most of the patients that come to my clinic have six, seven centimeters. In this patient group, is time very important the ablation time for the patients or if the patient have uh, some page uh, some nodules are uh, have a very hard venous uh, feeding hemorrhagic nodules in this nodule impedance sometimes uh, change uh, impedance affect ablation results in this patient group i prefer microwave otherwise we can use both technique both technique have not so much difference only one technique is a new technique. Other technology is a uh, old uh, beginner technique. Therefore, we can use both techniques. This is mm -hmm. my exper experience. Excellent, Dr. Cheki. It's, it's great to uh, have this uh, moment with you. We know you are very busy traveling and training other doctors and treating patients. Uh, congratulations on being a pioneer in ablation and for saving the quality of life of so many patients by avoiding thyroid surgery. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Philip. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you are looking for an Appalachian doctor or other Appalachian resources, such as Appalachian trainings around the world, you will find all at rfamd.com. If you'd like to reach me directly, or if you'd like to hear from a particular guest or about a particular topic, on this podcast, send me an email, philip at rfamd.com, philip with one L, P-H-I-L-I-P, -I -I at rfamd.com.